When I was young, I never imagined I'd be a scientist. But now, I can't imagine being anything else. Being a scientist is wonderful. Every day in the lab, you can make a new molecule that has never existed in the universe before. Having always loved science, but also being fascinated by the past, I'm enormously lucky to be able to combine both in my work. My name's Matthew Fuchter. I'm a professor of chemistry at Imperial College London, and my research aims to invent new scientific approaches that lie at the interface of chemistry with other areas of research and development. I do this by designing, constructing, and studying novel molecules that have a wide range of practical applications. In particular, I work on two main areas, drug discovery science and material science. For drug discovery science, my group aims to develop new chemistry-based approaches to understand the biology of disease and then translate this understanding into the generation of new experimental medicines. I work across multiple different disease areas, from infectious diseases such as malaria to other areas such as cancer. Then, in material science, I'm involved with developing new approaches for carbon-based electronic materials. For example, my group have created light-emitting materials that could one day appear in commercial organic LED displays for use in smartphones and other devices. Our materials should dramatically increase the energy efficiency of these displays, which would allow screens and batteries to last longer and reduce their carbon footprint. People think scientists are always in the lab, but I often get my best ideas drinking coffee in a cafe. I love being around people, and I think this is reflected in my work, which is all about collaboration. For me, I think the most exciting aspect of being chosen as a Blavatnik honoree is the chance to meet and network with the other award winners. Meeting with other scientists is always a wonderful opportunity to explore new ideas, so I'm very excited by the possible collaborations that could come from this award. My name's Steve Goldup, and I'm a professor and Royal Society Wolfson Research Fellow at the University of Southampton. In my research, I look at different ways to thread molecules together to generate interlocked structures that look like links in a chain or wheels on an axle. We try to make examples that haven't been investigated before, and then we look at how these molecules can be used to solve various scientific problems. Our biggest single contribution so far is in the synthesis and applications of a particular type of interlock molecule that displays a property called chirality. Up until now, this kind of chiral interlock molecule had been too hard to make and so hadn't been investigated properly. Our methods have allowed us to use these structures as catalysts and sensors, opening up new areas for research, like the synthesis of drug molecules, in biology for imaging, and computer displays, and even in the synthesis of artificial DNA. Alongside my research, I also teach undergraduates. I really enjoy giving small group tutorials where I get to help students test their understanding of the subject and guide them as they develop their skills. I'm really passionate about supporting and growing the research community. My partner Abby is incredibly important in helping me do my job well. She's great at keeping me grounded and helping me see the positives. Being a Blavatnik honoree is a personal privilege, but it also raises the profile of our work significantly. It's a wonderful moment when you realise that other people think what you're doing is worthwhile. Hopefully the recognition our work has received will help inspire the next generation of scientists to look at these intriguing and promising molecules. My research dream is to demonstrate applications of interlock molecules that make them genuinely useful tools for other scientists, as well as products for society in general. I'd love to see us move from exciting prototypes to real-world developments. My name is Kirsty Pinkman and I'm a reader in analytical chemistry at the University of York. I'm developing scientific techniques to analyse fossils so that we can work out how old they are, which will help us answer questions about our Earth's history as well as our own evolutionary story. So in my research, I apply analytical chemistry to archaeological and geological questions, particularly through analysing ancient biological materials. These fossil biomolecules are often really degraded, they're present in incredibly low concentrations, they're found in very complex mixtures, so they're analytically very challenging. By developing methods for their detection and studying the pathways of degradation, these molecules can tell us about an organism's life and death history. We need to understand the past because that's the only way we can understand our future. By studying these fossil biomolecules, we're tapping into a resource that gives us a window into the past. I've been able to identify and isolate a fraction of the protein contained within commonly occurring fossils, which degrades at a predictable rate. This intracrystalline protein is like a tiny time capsule, allowing us to date a wide variety of sites from the last three million years. 
A secure chronology means that now this rich fossil record can start to reveal how plants and animals, including humans, have responded to marked climate change. So it has implications for the future as well. I do feel very lucky to be a mum at a time when more mothers are able to continue working. My husband, Charlie Heiser, is a scientist in industry, and our seven-year-old daughter, Caitlin, comes up with some great questions and helpful ideas as well. Working with geologists, archaeologists, biologists and chemists is what has made my research possible, so I'm enormously grateful to the Quaternary community for supporting me. My reaction when I learnt I was a Blavatnik Award winner was shock. In my heart, this is truthfully shared with all of my amazing colleagues and collaborators that I've worked with. Even after 20 years, I still love chemistry because of the sheer creativity it offers. I want to keep pushing the boundaries and see where it leads. Hopefully, the world will keep surprising me. What am I dreaming of? Of getting our next big research paper published. So my dream is to do the best science that I can, but also to enable others around me to do their best science.